The research commissioned by Panasonic is amazing that it shows 62% of us are now far more willing to share our social interactivity via the social platforms than what we would have been five years ago. What we've eaten, what we've drank, the birth of a child or even the purchase of a new car for example are something we are far more willing to share via those network platforms. This is amazing when you consider how reserved we are in Great Britain and shows the emotional turnaround that the social networks have had. Social networking is breaking down the traditional British reserve because fundamentally it's there and human beings communicate. We're pre-programmed into communication so if you think about it, it's a survival strategy. So for example, if I'm one, I'm vulnerable. If I'm part of a group, I'm safer. So as we see others using it, as we use it ourselves, we become familiar with it, we become comfortable with it and we get the benefits out of it. Well, on social media I do share a lot. Um, it's normally, when I've come back from a holiday, I love to share my holiday photos because I like to make other people jealous. Well, I like sharing just mostly funny pictures, that's mostly what I post. Stuff like positive things. Like, I don't know people that say, oh, it's, it's so sad today, oh, I didn't get a job. Do you know, I think there's some, I think people share some really boring facts, uh, you know, what they're having for lunch. Too far is when people post too personal of things that I don't really need to know calling for attention, like, oh, I'm so sad, what's wrong? Don't worry, that sort of stuff, that, that really annoys me. That. There are a number of consequences about sharing information online. I think the first one you have to think about is, what will it look like? On social networks, people sometimes forget that, and they post stuff without thinking about the implication. It's not just one-to-one, -one. you're not just behind a cocoon, like you know your computer or your smartphone, or whatever it is you're posting from. You have to think about it's out there and lots of people will see it. Now having said that, there's lots of positive sides too. We can communicate with others. When people move away, we can keep up relationships. We can make new relationships online. So there are lots and lots of positives. Finding information more quickly because people say, oh, I know where you can find one of those. So social media has an upside. I love to use social networking when I'm watching TV programmes. Um, I get really passionate and into them and I love to interact with people that actually sort of feel the same way as I feel. I think it's really fun to express yourself, express how you feel, what you're doing. <laughs> Being able to interact with absolute strangers about a, um, a subject that we're both um, interested in. You're, you're in contact with people around the world. So I've got friends in America and in Australia and stuff who wouldn't know about me graduating or getting a job unless I phone them and that's expensive so it does keep you in contact. The evolution of social media really started way back when when we used to send letters by horse and carriage. Uh, with the introduction of the telephone we then moved on at the end of the last century uh, with the introduction of the mobile telephone and the popular computer. This introduced us to social media networking. From there we've evolved into the smartphone, the smart tablet and from there we're now evolving into the form of television where we can swipe and share, we can share our videos, our photos, even our internet web pages which has always traditionally been quite an insular experience. From there we can also do watch and chat so we can talk to people face to face no matter where they are in the world. That's the next step in the evolution of social media. The best place to find the best information if you click on our website panasonic.co.uk all the information you will need will be in the relevant pages on that website.